I good jump evening. every time. <laughs> good evening, everyone, and welcome to module four of Step Up to Success. I hope you're all well. And if you are watching this on replay, I hope you're well too. And if I can help with anything, please do shout. So tonight we're going to talk um, predominantly about networking and um, yes, all the different ways that we can network and sort of build our network as well. Because our oh, Amy's here now. Do excuse me. I'll just let Amy in. And say hi to her. So obviously just a, a quick bit of a recap. Um, so week one we've did the mindset stuff so I hope you're still going with that and remember um, with your affirmations and your goals and you know all those type of things do you know do check in and review it all regularly because particularly with your affirmations we said didn't we when we did the money week that those affirmations may have changed and hopefully um, you know, if you are starting to get more into a habit and more into a daily routine of things and getting a bit more structured with your goals, you know, things are going to change as you go on. So always be reflecting. I think the Monday nights are quite good for that and the sort of seven day goal setting thing as well. So I hope you're getting on all right with your goals for this week. Um, bearing in mind, we're sort of halfway through the week now. So if you set your goals on Monday, hopefully you've managed to tick some of those things off already. Good evening, Barry. How are you? You all right? Hi, Amy, as well um and then last week oh what's this smart goal yes well done smart goal setting it's Sean there I can see on the back of his thing um so also then last week we talked quite a lot about your mission um so what is it that you really want to achieve through well through your business but obviously through your life because if your life mission and your business mission can sync you are much more likely to take the right action to achieve those goals. That's what that boils down to, really. If you really do feel that you want to change things um, in any way, um, everyone's coming in now, excuse me, just letting Anne in there. I'll just let Anne join and then I'll say hello again. Hi, Kate, good evening. Hope you're well. Good evening. Anne's just joined us as well. She's just, just connecting to the audio. So... Good evening, Anne. Hi. Hi. I've just been waffling on doing a bit of a recap so far over the last three weeks. Um, and obviously last week, again, the thing about who do you actually want to work with? Who's your ideal client? No, Vanessa's coming in. <laughs> Should I give them all fines? Should we start doing charity fines for people that are more than five minutes late? Oh, I know what it's like. I was worried that when I logged on my... um. Computer Sorry. No, it's all right. Don't worry. I'll let Julian know as well. I'm going to start again in a minute, I think, because <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Oh. No, it's fine. No, don't worry. No, don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to module four. So tonight we're going to be talking about networking, but I've just been talking about a bit of a recap so far over the last three weeks. So obviously your affirmations, your goals, um, hope and your gratitude are really important. Did, did you see that lovely sunrise I caught this week? Talk about gratitude in the morning. Gosh, yeah. if anyone saw that, stunning, absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, so I'm lucky because I start and end my day in, in this beautiful place. And it always does make me really, you know, really thankful that I have those moments of peace. Um, sometimes it's not that easy, particularly when you've got young children. <laughs> uh, you have to work a bit harder if you don't have those moments to, to find your gratitude. But keep digging for it because it does make a difference. And obviously the money mindset stuff. And then last week we talked about your mission. Um, again, that's something that you've got to remember this is a work in progress and stuff will change. Different things will pop into your head. Something that might you thought was a goal sometimes isn't a goal. And that's hap that happens to me quite often, actually. I sort of set a goal thing. I'd really like to do that. And then when I really get into the nitty gritty of making it happen, I realised that actually I'm not that bothered about it. It's not something that, that is spurring me on as much as I thought it was. So that's just for you to keep addressing and, and recognise that you change and your goals are going to change as well. Um, so tonight we are going to be really focusing on networking, uh, what that means, what that looks like and how that really is so vital to your success in business. Um, for those of you in UW, you know, what's the very first thing we ask a partner to do is write a list, you know, of people they know. That's basically what's your network look like. <laughs> you know, that's what we're asking people is, you know, how big is your network? What's your network like? And how do we, and, you know, it's so obvious, isn't it, that those that have a good network with good relationships get ahead in business, in that, in that business, much quicker than those that don't. You know, it's a really, really simple fact. If you've got a good network and good relationships within that network and you start a business, you are immediately 
off on a better foot. So whatever you're thinking of doing in the future, building those networks and developing those relationships is really, really key. Um, right, so you've got your workbooks. I'm going to put the slides up and work through the slides as normal. Again, we'll have a good Q&A at the end. Um, but if anything's pressing, you know, as we go through, please do feel, you know, you can shout out or pop it in the chat or whatever you would like to do. So let's see if we can get the slides up and get cracking. Uh, OK, that's interesting because they're not there. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Let me just see what's happened to that. Right, if I share the screen, sorry, they were there a minute ago and they're not there now. Oh, there it is, that's fine. It's okay, we're all right. Let's move that. Presentation. Okay, can you see that all right, everybody? Yeah. So I've got, I can see Sean, Lorraine and Val. You know, I can always see three people. You usually jump around a bit. Lorraine, you're always there, actually. It must be because you're on so many of my Zooms. You must have priority Zoom place or something. I don't know, but you're, you're usually there in the window. Okay, so module four, uh, networking your way to success. So this is quite interesting. So to network means the action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and to develop professional or social contacts. Um, that was one reference to networking. So developing contacts, uh, and again, it can be very much professional or social. That's very key to remember. When we talk about networking, it's not just business networking. This is, you know, genuinely building that list of contacts that you know, um, whether that's socially or professionally. Um, now, I do believe this, that your success in business comes down to the size of your network and the depth of the relationships within it. And those that are willing to get out there and meet more people, it doesn't matter what your business is. Um, you know, bottom line is more people means more customers, which means more money. Um, so that is very important uh, for sure. Um, if you are not muted and you've got some background noise, would you mind muting yourselves? I can't see who it is, but someone's got a little bit of noise coming through. It's not an issue, but it's OK. So on the first page um, of your workbook, who's that? Can anyone see who is um, unmuted? And there's a bit of chatting going on in the background. I can't see who it is. Someone can come out. I think it's Amy. Mm. Amy, would you mind muting yourself, please, if it is you? Apologies. Thank you, Amy. Sorry, it's just I'm just letting Trudy back in. Trudy's obviously been kicked out and coming back. <laughs> so there we are. OK, so the four main types of networking and um, you may think of others, but there's the the formal business face to face networking. Um, so that's usually things that you pay to go to. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more in more detail about the different types within that um, later on. So there's a formal business face to face. There's the formal business online networking, which obviously has got particularly popular since the beginning of the pandemic. Many of the big networking groups that were always face to face came online and have stayed online. So, you know, even if you are stuck at home, there is no reason at all why you can't be networking. There's social media online. So that's a slightly different type of networking. That is literally, you know, meeting people online, chatting, sharing, um, but there's different types of groups that you can go in with that. And then of course there's the social networking, which is, you know, that that could be intentional or non-intentional. So social networking, by that I mean that could just be genuinely people that you meet when you're out and about. Or if you are particularly good at that, you might decide to intentionally socially network by maybe joining clubs, classes, things to do with your hobbies that you like. And your aim of that is to meet people eventually to, to drip into your business, you know, so that, that's the one that you've got to be really, really clear and careful with how you do that. OK, so we're going to go through all the sort of different ways that you do all these things. So interesting question, and we'll come back to this at the end. Which do you prefer and why? Um, and maybe you haven't tried all of these yet. So if you haven't, then absolutely, this is what tonight's about, to try and help you have the confidence to step into some of these places. Because business networking in particular is absolute gold dust. If you can do it well and find the right network, everybody is in there to help everybody else with referrals. You know, you're not selling to the room, you're selling through the room. So that's why things like BNI that are very expensive to join, but you only have one person from each sector in there, they are very, very effective. Um, so, you know, again, there's lots of different scales of the business network, and we can chat a bit more about this at the end. We, we go through a little bit more on this, but that's just the main four key areas to, to be aware of and to perhaps ask yourself the question, am I 
doing anything in those areas? Could I be doing a little bit more in there? <clears throat> right. Slides aren't playing now. Come on, behave yourself. There we are. Uh, right, so was that the next one? <laughs> No, it wasn't. Sorry, you jumped one. Right. So seven key skills for success in networking. Again, there's, there's a space in your workbook to write these down. You may have had a guess at some of these already. Um, so number one, those of you that are in that short challenge I did when we were talking about how quickly people make a decision on you, how quickly people decide whether to trust you and all the different ways to build rapport successfully. Um, that is absolutely a number one key skill to you know to really check in and make sure that you're doing that well um, in networking situations now are some networking situations you're going to have the opportunity to build the relationship because you're going to see the same people week in week out or month in month out but there are some and in most actually where there'll be a guest or there'll be somebody in there that you are not going to have the opportunity to see again so if you could really form a good relationship with them super quickly you're more likely to be able to take that forward being memorable and unique so we talked about you know, three things. Uh, last week, we talked about three things people might know you for from your social media. Um, you know, you're all unique. All of us are completely unique. And it's trying to be memorable in that situation as well. So, you know, think about how can you stand out and be a little bit different from maybe somebody else, particularly if you are in a business where there's lots of you uh, that can come across in networking. So again, UW, and um, the reason I didn't network particularly well when I started UW was because every time I went, there seemed to be a lot of UW people in there. And sadly, some of the UW people had not networked well. You know, they'd come across as a bit pushy and a bit over enthusiastic, let's say, <laughs> a bit desperate almost. Um, and that was quite a hard act to follow. The other reason I didn't network much years ago was because the kids were little and a lot of the, the meetings were breakfast meetings, you know, and when I was on my own with the kids, it was impossible to get out and do those. So. But be memorable, be, be unique, be authentic, work with integrity. So if you say you're going to do something for somebody, do it. And, you know, do be real, be there because you are genuinely wanting to connect with people. Give us gain. It just basically means give more to the room than you want to take from the room. Always give first. Always be the one that wants to find a referral for someone before you expect any business back. You know, genuinely try and get to know people in there. Recommend other people. Following up is so key. Um, you know, in business networking, people do expect you to connect with them. You know, that's why you're there. You're there to connect with people. So if you meet somebody at any networking event, um, and even social networking, if you meet them and you're getting on well with them and having a chat, then follow up by, you know, following them on social media or asking them to, or, you know, find them on LinkedIn or whatever, wherever they're going to hang out um, and, and make sure that you follow up with them. And if you don't get a chance to have a one-to-one -one with them during the meeting, there's no reason at all why you can't say, look, should we just grab a coffee, either virtually or face-to-face, -face, so that we can find out a bit more about what each other does and how we can help. Um, and I've had great success, um, you know, with, with signing up customers in particular after having a follow-up after networking. But first meeting is always about them. Uh, and be consistent and patient. You know, it's not a quick fix. You're not going to just bought, you know, waltz into your first business networking meeting and come out with 20 appointments. That's not how it works. You need to be prepared to keep going, make those friendships, forge long-term relationships and be patient. But if you do that, then the results do come. So most business networking meetings follow this sort of format. And this is pretty much the same, whether it's face-to-face -face or online. So this is just what to expect. If you get brave and you go and join a business networking meeting, you haven't done one before. So it's usually the meet and greet and the open networking, obviously online that doesn't happen. But normally, if you go to a networking event, you're going to turn up a little bit early. And that can be so daunting. I really remember, you know, walking into a room full of people Everybody seems to know each other and you don't know anybody. And actually, that is probably one of the most daunting situations um, to overcome. So that's why we're going to talk a little bit about form tonight and about conversations and about how to set up, you know, strike into a conversation, that sort of situation. It's funny, isn't it? Because, um, well, I suppose even if you walked into a party and you didn't know anybody and everyone was chatting, you know, it's still it is a daunting situation for any human being to do that. So we'll talk a bit about that. Usually then the host will sort of bring the meeting together and introduce themselves and the, what's going to happen. And then you have your lovely one minute intro. So we're going to talk about that tonight as well. What do you say when they say, OK, so Lorraine, tell you know, your turn over to you and you've got a minute. Um, again, that's something that can be 
quite daunting. You're standing up in a room of people and saying your bit, which is where practicing and really nailing that and knowing what you're going to say really comes in. Then they normally have a guest speaker. And then very often they will have some one to one networking. So you'll have like 10 minutes with somebody. And that that does tend to work online as well, is that they'll put you in breakout rooms or whatever. Um, so you can have some one to one networking at the end of the meeting. So here we are, then we are going to get into this now a little bit. Um, so this is the question, or this is the answer, I should say, that you really need to nail this, the answer to the question, what do you do? Um, that needs to be really clear with you, whether, you know, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whenever in the, the life you get asked, what do you do? You need to really have a practiced answer to that. Um, and you also want to be talking about, you know, this comes back to what we were talking about last week, really, the transformation. You know, there's very, there's two very, very different things that you could say. Um, I've got, just got a couple of examples that I wrote down here. Um, so, for example, I could say I switch people from their current providers over to our company to save them money. You know, that's pretty dull, but that, <laughs> I suppose that is what we do. Or I could say I help people who are struggling with rising utility costs and feel out of control of their household income. So which of those two would be more memorable to someone? And this is just with the what do you do? This is not necessarily the woman intro. We go into that in a minute. Um, so I've got a couple of more examples I'll just read out because it'd be great if you could get yours down while we're doing this. Um, I'm an accountant. I do people's books and tax returns for them. Or you could say I help entrepreneurs with all their financial side of their business so they can focus on what they love to do. <laughs> That's the same thing, <laughs> but said very, very differently. Um, uh, I, oh, I did one did one for Adam here as well. I run a website that gives hints and tips to people who are sleep deprived after having children. Or you could say, I help parents with young children get a good night's sleep. You know, which is the best? So you've really got to think about what you actually do, the, the solution, if you like. I recruit for a company and show people how they can work from home. Or I help people develop a great income, but still be able to do the school run and be there for their kids. You just have a think for a minute and see if you can get something down to answer that very simple question, what do you do? And then I'll sort of help you with how you turn that then perhaps into a one minute um, introduction in a networking situation. So if you were... Um, again, obviously, I know that this is something that's going to be a work in progress for you, but if you were then in a networking group, so you're standing up and you've got to say what you do, you have a minute. A minute actually is quite a long time. You know, you can get quite a bit in a minute. So this is definitely something that's worth you all practicing, timing yourselves, you know, getting it off to, to a fine art, because actually, whether you're networking or not, if you can elaborate on that, what do you do in a really confident way and give people a proper example of how that works, you're going to really create more intrigue, which people will want to then find out a bit more. So firstly, um, my name's Celia, Celia Gad, and I'm from Utility Warehouse. If I was had my Utility Warehouse hat on, I might say, oh, my name's Celia, Celia Gad, and I run a business called Passion to Pocket. All right, so whatever it is, you do need to sort of say who you are and who you're representing in the very beginning of that. And then I have put here, again, this is just an example. Um, I help people who are struggling with rising costs and feeling out of control of their household income. For example, I went to see a lady who was recommended to me the other day. Her husband had recently been put into care and she was feeling overwhelmed with all the bills and wasn't sure what she needed to do. I helped her put it all onto a single bill, explained exactly what she needed to do and saved her 80 pounds a month, as well as showing her how she never has to pay full price for her shopping ever again. I'm particularly keen to be put in touch with parents with large families who really want to be able to provide for their children without worrying about finances and money. All right. So, so I've said what I do. I've given examples, which then puts it much clearer into context for people so they understand better what it is you do. And then if you're networking, it's really important to ask the room for what you want. Who do you want to be referred to? And this comes down to that ideal client. So if you've absolutely nailed who your ideal client is, you can actually ask the room, do you know this person? You know, this is who I'm looking for. Um, so another example. So I put then Celia uh, Utility Warehouse, the magic bill fairy, I would have said at the end. All right. So you just say something at the end as well to repeat your name, repeat the company, but put something a bit funny, a bit different, you know, something that people are going to remember you by. 
So another example was, um, I show mums how they can earn a really substantial income between the school run and still be there for the kids 100% when they're needed. For example, I helped a young mum last month who was really struggling with childcare costs and felt really bad about paying other people to look after her kids while she went out to her cleaning job. Now she works half the hours she was, even when the kids are around, and last month earned over a thousand pounds just by helping her friends and family. I showed her by just how, sorry, I showed her by working just a few hours a week consistently, she can also build up a passive income and start each month with money already coming in, whether she works or not. I'm particularly keen to be put in touch with any other mums you know who would love to earn a great income without having to worry about childcare and who is going to look and who is going to look after the kids while they go out to work. So again, that's you know, that's quite specific, that's nailing it down. Um, I help budding entrepreneurs with all the bookkeeping and financial part of their business, leaving them to concentrate on what they are good at and what they really enjoy. For example, I've just started working with a lady who makes and sells her own clothes. I realised that she wasn't claiming back nearly all the things she could as business expenses and immediately increased her profit margin. She now can focus on what she loves, designing and selling their clothes, while I keep track of her expenses and submit her self-assessment. So there we are. That was just another example. So have you all got sort of got the gist of that and got some stuff that, you know, to play with? Um, you know, it's great. And once you get to know the room, so if you're regularly networking in a particular group and you know who's in there, you can really tailor it then for asking for referrals that you know the people in the room will have. All right. You know, so so that's that's the thing. It's about who do you know and who do they know and how can you really get your message across so they understand what you do in one minute. <laughs> without being boring and if you do I mean I love the example things because actually if you were in the same group every month every month you could come with a new example couldn't you a new person you've helped a new a new situation a new story and it makes it really real um, and then so we're just going to talk a bit about form so this is to help you if you are nervous in social situations or nervous in a networking situation when you get into the one-to-one -one you know bit or when you're just chatting to people at the beginning we talk about this thing called form so f friends family o occupation r recreation m is the message um so this is just to give you some structure to to a simple conversation you all know to have a conversation um now all i would say is if you don't know people very well i personally wouldn't start with friends or family you know, it's a little bit of an odd thing to say someone you don't know very well, or have you got children? You know, you've got to be so careful with, you know, with talking to people about what could potentially be a, an awkward situation. So you've got to be, have that really, really mindful. So I would always go straight to the occupation bit. Um, if I was in a networking situation or a situation I didn't know people very well. Um, and the occupation really bit comes back to asking them, what do you do, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, what do you do for work? And then it's drawing out of them because what you don't want is the conversation to come back to you until you're ready for that. So to really engage and build rapport with people, you want to keep the conversation on them for as long as possible. So if you say, what do you do? And they give you some sort of explanation. So how does that work then? What does a, what does a normal day look like for you? What type of people do you work with? You know, where is that? Is that home base then? Or do you drive? You know, keep the conversation going around that. And keep asking them questions and make sure you stop and listen to their answers and really listen as well. And, um, you know, recreation, it can move in that direction. Um, holidays is a good one, isn't it? You know, recreation, holidays. So, you know, especially at the moment, it's quite easy to strike up a conversation about holidays because of lockdown and everything, you know, and you can talk about lockdown is quite a good conversation. How did you get on through lockdown? Where were you, you know? Um, and then almost that's a quite an appropriate time to then maybe come back to the to the family bit, because usually by then they will have given you some indication as to their family situation. And, uh, you know, having a fun chat about how do you get on with the homeschooling? You know, if they're obviously parents, that's quite fun. Now, the message is, you know, you have an ability to talk to them about your business. But to be honest, that isn't going to come, you know, it, Unless they absolutely screamed out to you in the in the in the chat that they absolutely need what it is, whatever it is that you provide as a service or product, then of course you would mention it. Um, but otherwise, you really want to keep that conversation going and until it does come back to you, because what will happen is eventually it will come back to you. It might not be in that first conversation, it might be later on, but they are eventually going to say, So what do you do? Okay, and then you're ready. <laughs> you're ready because you practiced and you've practiced it and you know what you're going to say and you're going to make it relevant and interesting. 
And nine times out of 10, if there is a relevance to them in what you do, they'll say, wow, that sounds fascinating. I'd love to know more about that. You know, or they'll say, gosh, and my sister probably could do with that or whatever. You know, that's the ideal situation is that you deliver the message so well that it's never salesy, it's never pushy, it's never you trying to back them into a corner. It's just a conversation that allows them to realize they might need what you want. So I hope that all makes sense. So some examples of business networking groups, they really, really do vary. And I would totally suggest, I think all of you, uh, if you're not brave, who haven't done this yet and you want to build your business next year, networking is totally the way forward. So I would totally recommend if you're not already, have a look at some um, businesses that meet near you. So they're very, very different, but they nearly all will let you go along for a freebie, you know, the first time to check it out and see whether you like it. And they're normally very, very pleased to have guests along. So you can just literally Google networking in my area and all sorts will come up. So BNI is the sort of top end, I suppose. Um, someone put something in the chat. Let me just see if I can see it without messing up slides. Ah, well done, Amy. So Amy's just about to set one up in the oval oh that's fine well if you need any help or want to chat about that let me know um so bni is the sort of high end in that it's quite expensive uh, you're the only person of your category in the group so that's a good thing and it's very structured it's very formal and you do actually have to bring referrals back to the group on quite a regular basis or you sort of get struck off eventually um so they do have quite quite rigid rules it is quite rigid I nearly joined a BNI group that was meeting lunch times, and I did go up a few times to Thornbury, and they were they were okay for me personally. It was a little bit suited and booted, and sort of um, quite male oriented, but that didn't that doesn't really matter. But they were they were very professional uh, people in there mostly, and it was just a little bit too serious for me personally. But I know there's lots of UW partners that do really really well out of BNI, so it's just it's just a personal choice of how how you like four N is good much more relaxed they they were doing loads of online i did quite a lot of 4n actually last year through lockdown because it was like a fiver and you could go to an online meeting um so 4n are good and you can have anyone you know anyone can sort of pitch up i don't know what the membership cost is now probably around 20 pounds a month or something i think to be part of that most of them you pay a membership and then you pay to go to the actual meeting um because you often get a breakfast or something as well your partnership started last year i got a little bit involved with some of that for, for a while which is quite good actually and they're still going and the, well the guy that was running it isn't running it anymore but the, the guy that started it is and he's lovely brock and um yeah so again you can look up them see where they're meeting they're very um sort of heavily based down in cornwall then you've got lots of ladies groups so sorry gentlemen <laughs> on here there's lots and lots of ladies only groups uh, women in business mums in business ladies of latte and then there is the fsb the federation of small businesses and they do quite a lot of free networking as well um, which is a great way of getting contacts so that's just a case of seeing where you fit well um, if you want to go um, and most of those will have face-to-face -face and online opportunities and then we are going to be thinking about sort of leading on from what i was saying last week about facebook groups and we are going to do more of this next week as well when we talk about building your audience um what i would advise if you're wanting to network through facebook in groups is to really have a good look and just pick five groups that you're going to show up in consistently and, and actually make relationships in there. And then of course, think about where your ideal clients are gonna be. So going back to that's that bit we did last week about who you really wanna serve, we'll go and find the groups with those people in. Um, and that's why actually starting your own group to build a, a group of your ideal clients is a really good idea. Um, so obviously I've put there like passion to pocket because most of you in that group mums in business again is a good one you know but get more involved in there you know message people in there and say hi you know I notice you're, you're in mums in business same as me in the Sedgemo Mendic group do you fancy grabbing a coffee sometimes so we can find out a bit more about each other you know that's why people are in those groups they're in there because they want to network they want to show their business to more people so they're not going to be offended by that at all but remember when you do that then you've got to be make the first one all about them you know and then you can pick it back up and there's loads of business groups if you put business networking into facebook loads of groups come up 
and some of those are free groups um you know so you can go in and you know join and have a little hunt around for a while and just see whether it's a place that you feel comfortable i'm in far too many at the moment i'm going to come out of quite a lot so my goal is by january to find the five that i really want to you know work in and hang out in and and uh, meet people in but to start with you might have to go in a few more just to find what space works for you best oh that's because i looked at the chat and now my size don't want to go there we are um, okay, so we are. So this is sort of five top tips. Some of this I've covered already. So pick two face-to-face -face groups to start to attend. That would be my aim for you. If you, depending on your time, obviously. But if you're wanting to build your business next year consistently, then I would really think about finding two face-to-face -face groups that you're going to attend and you know really work in properly. There we go. Five Facebook groups to work in consistently. Start your own group because if you are the leader of the group the admin of the group the authority of the group it's really easy to make good connections through there and wherever you are be the most helpful and interactive person <laughs> in the group really help people look out for questions about your subject but you know you don't have to be the expert to help somebody out if they ask a question you know people ask questions and ask for help don't they in facebook groups about all sorts of things and if you know the answer or you can point them in the right direction, then, then answer them, you know, go in there and, and post and comment and be helpful and really make sure you do follow up properly with everyone, making friends for the sake of making friends. <laughs> um, because at the, you know, at the end of the day, just think how many people you could add to your network just by doing these things on the screen. You know, how many people are you adding to your list, as it were, on a daily basis of people that you can serve in business or people that are no people who want what you've got. It's huge. You know, this is this is the thing is once you've connected with people like that, actually selling to them whatever your products and services is is so easy. If they need what you want, what you've got, but you're going to establish that along the way, aren't you? You'll find out whether they have through your conversations, and if they haven't, it doesn't matter because they still will know lots of other people that you can help. Okay, so that's on to module five. So I'm going to come out of here now. So um, there's just a little couple of things in the chat. Let's have a look what's in the chat. Okay, no, that's from um, Amy. Yeah, brilliant. So firstly, let's just open it up. Has anybody got any questions or comments or feedback about any networking groups they've been to that they found really good? Anything like that would be great. Sue, you network a bit, don't you, I think? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I was really nervous when I first went. Everyone seemed to know each other. But when we went into lockdown um, and we went on to virtual networking, that was where I really built the relationships up because these are the breakout rooms and you can't kind of hide when there's only two or three of you there. You have to contribute and get to know each other. And when we went back to face to face, it was like walking into a group full of friends again. And we went back face to face for the first time last week, which was really good. We're going on to your, um, your, your kind of line. There's a lady in our group who's a photographer and she introduces herself as, hi, my name's Joanne, Joanne Cooper. I shoot things. And it re it's really catchy and everyone knows yeah. who she is. And she's built herself up that way. So it's quite nice you know, for people who have um, other businesses to think of a really short yeah. strap line to get across because we all know Joanne is a photographer. And it, yeah. and it just makes us smile even every time she says it. So, uh, so yeah, it's um, I find it an outreach. It's the best thing I've ever done. I love it, and it would it's given me the confidence to go to other groups. Not that I can get in there yet, but I would go to another group now without the fear that I went to the first one. So, if you can find a nice local friendly one, get in there and do it. It's brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. So, what what group is it? Just um, is it a, a sort of a one that's got like um all around the country or is it no no there's a lady called ingrid that i introduced to passion to pocket and she oh, yeah. organizes it locally it's just my local town center one but she's she owns four businesses um so she's really well connected but through that she gets all the other networking groups to come as well so we, we're sort of branching out you get to know the other networking groups from going to that one which is really good yeah, um, that is brilliant. No, thank you. So yeah, Ash, I've just seen that. So um, Ash is always starts saying, hi, I'm Jack, because she talks about all the different things that she does. So that's great. And it, you, know, you do get to get known like that. Um, now, where's oh, Amy? Where is Amy? She, where's he? Oh, there's Amy. Amy, tell us about what are you setting up then? That sounds exciting. Well done. Um, I just saw a post, um, I guess a bit similar, like when we were in lockdown, um, I wanted to get involved in networking, but was a bit kind of nervous. And I was on maternity leave. Um, Luca was born in lockdown. 
um, and then um, it's BWI. So they're looking for somebody in Yeovil. Um, so I've just had a couple of chats um, with them, but unfortunately kind of short lived because we've just had COVID through the house. So it's all been a bit, oh, <laughs> been a bit chaotic, but um, yeah, so hopefully I'm going to um, set up something like that, but I've BWI never done anything like that before. So ah, well done. What does BWI stand for? Uh, business Women In. OK, I haven't I haven't heard of that one. So there we are. So there's just there are loads. I mean, obviously, I'm running the Mums in Business one locally here and it's been really good. I mean, that's how Ash and I met and, you know, a few, few other people. It has been good. It's a nice little group. And the Mums in Business is child friendly as well. Oh, so that, yeah, that's that's good. Makes it stand out. For, you know, I think it's the only child friendly networking group, you know, that advertises that they're child friendly. So that's a really good one as well to get into. Just on that point, if any of you are obviously not in this area, because I'm the leader here, but if you live outside of this area and you would be interested, and obviously this is for ladies, sorry, Barry, <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm sorry about this, but if you'd be interested in, in running the Mums in Business group in your area, it's worth, just ask me and I can put you in touch with the end of that. So they're looking for leaders in all areas, so you can Google it and see if there is one in your area, and if there isn't. Um, it's a good idea you know that could be that Facebook group I've talked about what that you set up and you know get your ideal client in and start talking to them that could be that um fabulous it is it is scary I mean I think networking can be scary I think well Vanessa and I had a lovely one-to-one yesterday didn't we and we talked about that and it's one of her sort of you know fears is having to speak in public I suppose or just um you know, it, it is that standing out. And I think maybe I went to one women, I can't remember which group it was, it was a couple of years ago, but you know, really that all the women were like in power suits <laughs> and just looked absolutely like, and I walked in, I think I probably had blue jeans on and a nice <laughs> shirt. And I just remember feeling totally out of place in this group. But again, we shouldn't feel like that, should we? That's that, you know, that probably now I wouldn't, but then I did. And now I just walk in and I would be okay because I've taught myself to be okay in that situation. But, it, you know, it is daunting. Is that the be... one that you sent me on as a proxy? No, that wasn't that one. No, no, I thought they, they were okay. Compared... It, was, it was the same uh, organisation. Was that women in business? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was the same organisation, but it was their other meeting up... Um, Cabri way that I went to that was really uh, something else. You went for lunch, didn't you? I sent you along for I lunch. I did. Petrified, but I did. <laughs> well done, well done. Right, okay. So how did you all get on with the what you do? Have you all written something down? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but mine needs a damn good tweak. <laughs> damn good tweak. I like it, I like it. I just scribbled. <laughs> Uh, right. Um, I, what I was going to do now, but I know, I, I know some, I know somebody that doesn't like doing this. If anyone else doesn't like doing this, you can tell me. I was going to put you into breakout rooms now, um, because I can't think of a safer place to practice a little bit of a breakout, uh, you know, networking situation than a group like you lot, because you you all know each other and you're all lovely and you're all going to be nice and kind. Those of you with cameras off, are you happy to go into the breakout room and? just have a little chat. I know that you might have stuff going on, which is why you've got your cameras off. If you don't want to, um, let me know, because if not, the, the computer selects it. So what I was gonna do is just literally put two of you, so you'll just be in a room with one other person, okay? If you're feeling nervous about it, just get the other person to speak. And hopefully you won't be in a room with someone else that doesn't want to speak, because that'll be a quiet room if you are. But literally, all I'd like you to do is just ask each other what do you do and you'll end up having a laugh about it and you know you could even nick the other person's whatever but just literally say what do you do take it in turns what do you do and then just ask each other one other question based around the form right so it could be holiday one you know just pick something super simple are you going on holiday this year it sounds ridiculous i know and it depends. This is potluck, isn't it? So who you get into a room with, because you might well know the person really well, because some of you do know each other really well. It might be someone you've never spoken to before. So it's a little bit potluck and I'm not going to try and sort it out myself. I'm just going to do it. It's literally going to be just a few minutes. All right. And then we'll, we'll pull you back out because you only need like a minute each each way. Um, are you all happy to do that? If anyone isn't happy to do that, put your hand up and shout at me. I know some of you aren't happy, but you're all going to do it. <laughs> so <that's> <laughs> You know me so well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just go for it. Be be kind, be nice, everybody. Um, 
And then I'll yeah, say, so literally, it'll be five minutes, and then we'll just come back, have a chat about that, and then we're pretty much wrapped up. And one of my bits of feedback was that you like it that I keep it to bang on an hour and no longer <laughs> these trainings. So I've taken that on board, and I promise you, we won't go over the hour. Okay, let me. If you want to stop recording before you put us onto breakout rooms. Yeah, well done. I will. So good evening, those that are watching on recording. I hope this has been useful, <laughs> and I will see you soon. I'm actually going to.